Hey, good morning, everybody. It's your pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and this is Monday Minutes. I hope you had a great weekend. I had a fantastic weekend hiking in the mountains and reflecting on what's important in life. And as I was walking at 7,000 feet for five miles, I figured, why don't I do kind of a different take on sequencing that a lot of people might not think about but might have to struggle through. And that is applying effects to props that the sequencer simply doesn't have or want or need or care about. And maybe I should do a better job at explaining how you can more easily put effects on these models without pulling your hair out. So I have an example here. And if you look at the screen, you're gonna see that I have a nativity scene with baby Jesus and a bunch of shepherds, and some sheep, and a camel. Yeah, they look good. And I don't typically have these type of elements in my show. I, you know, I'm not that kind of AC static light show kind of guy. I like the pixels, I like that movement. But I also enjoy seeing light shows that do have these elements because I, I think it brings a different uh, feel to the overall show. So I want to show you all how I deal with this or what I would do if I had this in my show, how to apply existing effects to get the best out of these without resequencing the entire song. You shouldn't have to do that. You really shouldn't have to do that. So I have a song here that I did for a gentleman in a church uh, a while back, and I'll share with you what I did in this. Uh, I'll tell you some things that I like and I don't like about using... Uh, what I call uh, static elements or nativity scenes, uh, things that still have pixels in them, or possibly AC, but let's just say that these elements have pixels. And just because the pixel can do all these crazy chases, what well, that doesn't mean they should always have to do these crazy chases. Sometimes you just need to light the element to benefit the scene and the music and the story. Okay, there's always a narrative to a light show, at least there should be, we, we strive for that. So I have all of these elements in here, and if you look at the breakdown of the nativity baby Jesus, there's baby Jesus in there, there's a cradle, there's cradle legs, okay, so that's one. Uh, if we look at the camel, uh, well, that's just a camel. Uh, Joseph, all the characters, these are going to have faces, possibly hair colors, hands, robes, sandals, so these were all submodeled to make sure that we could isolate them if we wanted to have an impact on color differentiation to separate what these different components are that make up each of the characters. So most of the shepherds have sandals and robes and some have the staffs. Uh, the sheep are sheep. I don't think there's really anything beyond the sheep. I don't even think uh, I used an eye, different color for the eye. I don't think there are eyes in the sheeps. <clears throat> And of course, uh, here we have Mary with a face, gown, hair, and sandals. So what I like to do, depending on what the music is going to be doing, is I simply light these different elements. And as this is playing in the opening scene, you're going to see here, there's stuff going on in the house. But I have chosen these colors. I used a color picker, and I went online to find things that would look best to represent this and still blend in with the song. And then subtle fades are so helpful in not distracting the eye from the overall show and confusing the brain with where am I supposed to be looking. I see that in so many sequences. I just don't know where to look. It's, I'm everywhere. Sometimes that can be by design. If it's a hip hop song or something really like dubstep and kind of crazy, I totally get it. But in something that's sort of soothing the soul, so to speak, uh, your eyes shouldn't be trying to figure out where to go. And it's the same thing here. And again, you can see what's going on with the house. There's nothing that's really detracting from this. Candle effect is a wonderful effect to use on things like this. Now, I just have the on effect on these because I wanted them just to be present in this faith-based song. But the candle effect, if you look here, I have the candle effect here. And on this scene, all right, if these videos are helping you, smash that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
I'm hoping that these videos help you navigate the turbulent waters known as x lights and that each day you learn something new, it gets a little bit easier. All right, back to the trading. This is blending in with the house and it's okay to put all of your characters in a whole house effects or all pixels scene. That's okay as long as it blends and it continues to tell a story. It still looks very beautiful. Got a little bit of twinkling going on there. It's very, very subtle, very, very nice, easy on the eyes and helps support the story. And then we are simply back to telling more of the story back with another verse. We have the sweeping going on with the house, uh, just static look to the lights on the E's and verts and that, see how that just fades in and fades out. Beautiful. Uh, now, could I have taken effects like my arches or eaves and copied them and put them on there? Sure. And, and sometimes that's called for. If you have an outline of an element and you have many submodels, but you want the element to move with the rest of the house, that's okay. Experiment with it. But if it pulls too much attention with your eyes or you can no longer make out that that is some type of character relevant in a nativity scene, you've gone too far. Uh, it just sort of maybe is too much. Or if you must do that, have an underlying color then have the movement, bring that movement, whether it's single strand effect, bring it down like 70%, make it a hint, make it very subtle to create that movement and uh, you'll be looking much, much better, I promise you. Here's another whole house effect that you can see just swirling with everything. Again, in here, I cannot always tell what these are until these effects hit it just right. And then that still works. It still works great. It's not throughout the entire song, so I don't have to deal with that, but it does that whole house effect with the spinning. I think it looks really cool with those elements and then the bursts. I mean, that to me just works. In the end, it has to please you, but I think there are some, I don't want to say rules, but guidelines to follow. If your audience is struggling where to find the story in your light show, you might have to throttle back a little bit. Uh, don't feel like just because you poke thousands of pixels in your props that are nativity scenes or any other type of scenes that they must go blinky flashy. That's just not true. Uh, lights are lights. I don't believe Christmas lights are just Christmas lights. I don't believe Halloween lights are just Halloween lights. I believe lights are lights and how we control them define the purpose of what they are. And all you're trying to do is convey that story to your audience and be selfish, be so selfish, make it beautiful and amazing for you. Your audience will reap the rewards. All right. I hope this has been helpful. You folks have a wonderful week. I look forward to next Monday minutes. We'll catch you soon. See ya. Thank you.